In this recording, we shall look at how to factorise a number into a product of prime numbers. And first, let's look at a couple of definitions. When we talk about a factor of a whole number, it is any whole number that the original number is divisible by. So therefore, if a whole number can be expressed as a product of two whole numbers, both those numbers are its factors. So for example, if we think about the number 6, that could be written as 1 times 6, or it could be written as 2 times 3. Therefore, 1, 2, 3 and 6 are the factors of the number 6. However, if a number only has two different distinct factors, 1 and the number, it is a prime number. So 5, for instance, can only be written as 1 times 5, and hence it is a prime number. And note that 1 itself is actually not a prime number. As 1 equals 1 times 1, that is not a product of two different factors. And the first few primes are 2, 3, 5, 7, 11. And it's worth noting a few useful properties that can help find factors of some numbers. First, a number is divisible by 2, if and only if the number is even. A number is divisible by 3, if and only if the sum of its digits are also divisible by 3. So, for example, if we consider the number 129, then if we add up its digits, 1 plus 2 plus 9 equals 12. 12 is divisible by 3, therefore we know that 129 is also divisible by 3. And any number divisible by 5 will end in a 5 or a 0, and any number divisible by 10 will end in a 0. So keeping some of those things in mind, let's now look at how we write a number as a product of primes. And one way of doing this, which is the method we're going to look at here, is to check each successive prime number in turn to see if the number is divisible by it. And if it is divisible by that prime, we divide that prime into the number, check again if the result is still divisible by the prime number, and we continue on in that way. Then we go on to the next prime number, see if it's divisible by that prime number, and we continue on like this until we have the number as a product of primes. So let's have a look at the number 120 to illustrate this. If we want to write this as a product of prime numbers, we said the first prime number is 2, and 120 is even, so it will be divisible by 2. In fact, working out 120 divided by 2 gives 60. Hence, let's rewrite this as 60 times 2. Then 60 is also an even number. That's divisible by 2 again. So dividing 60 by 2 gives 30. So that 120 is 30 times 2 times 2. 30 again is an even number and divisible by 2. In fact, 30 is 15 times 2. And that's also all still multiplied by 2 times 2 over here. But 15, that is an odd number, so that is not divisible by 2. So let's move on to our next possible prime factor, which is 3. Is 15 divisible by 3? Yes, it is. In fact, 15 is 5 lots of 3, so that gives 5 times 3, times 2 times 2 times 2. And 5 itself is a prime number. So that means we now stop, as we now have written 120 as a product of primes. Although we could, if we chose, also instead rewrite it, 2 times 2 times 2, that could be written as 2 cubed. So that would also be an alternative way of writing 120 as a product of prime factors. Let's have a look at a second example writing 455 as a product of prime numbers. Now 455 is an odd number, so it is not going to be divisible by 2. The next prime number to consider is 3. Is it divisible by 3? Not immediately obvious, so let's add up the digits. 
4 plus 5 plus 5. That equals 14. But we saw that a number is divisible by 3 if and only if its digits sum to another number that is divisible by 3. And 14 is not divisible by 3. So no, 455 is not divisible by 3. What is the next prime number? 5. And 455 will be divisible by 5 because it ends in a 5. In fact, we can work out that 455 divided by 5 gives 91. Hence, 455 is 91 times 5. But what about the number 91? Is it divisible by any more prime numbers? Now, the next prime number is 7. In fact, if we work out 91 divided by 7, we get 13. Therefore, 455 is 13 times 7 times 5. And 13 is, in fact, a prime number. So that would be how we would write 455 as a product of primes.